A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning, fellow mathematicians! Welcome back to the first math video here in 2021 on my channel. Got to start nice and chill into the new year with a very, very simple um, little analysis problem, you could say, calculus problem I found over on Twitter. So let's imagine we have an x-axis given and through this x-axis runs a nice parabola. And we want to find out what the shaded area is between the x-axis and this parabola. And this right here is what we are going to do today. And it's fairly easy because we have two things given, okay? Because we have some upper and lower bound where our parabola is going to run through the x-axis. Those upper and lower bounds obviously represent the zeros of this function, two zeros, so this is good. And one more information is that b is double the length of a, meaning a is half of b, meaning we can rewrite this as two times a. And now it becomes even more easy because we can now formulate what our function for this parabola actually is. I mean, we can turn this into its factorized form, namely x minus the first root times x minus the second root, simple calculus. And we don't know if this function right here, this parabola is actually a parent function, meaning with a scaling factor of one, meaning we have to take into account that there's a scaling factor in this problem, okay? R times something with the scaling factor being strictly greater than zero because this right here is not open to the downwards y direction or the like, so we need to take this into account. R is greater or greater than zero, strictly greater than zero. And now we want to find out what the shaded area is and finding out areas is fairly easy by using just integrals. Meaning what we are going to do, we are going to integrate our function f of x with respect to x. But what are the upper and lower bounds? I mean, obviously they are the zeros of our function. So we are integrating from a to 2a. And now we can plug everything in. So this right here is going to be the integral from a to 2a of, okay, r times blah, blah, blah. r is a constant, it's just a scaling factor. We can bring it to the front using linearity of the integral. And then x minus a times x minus 2a integrate with respect to x. Now you can just factor everything out and integrate or do integration by parts or the like, but you can make your life way easier actually by introducing a fairly nice substitution. Namely, we're going to say that some t be equal to, okay, let's say x minus a is our t. This has the nice property that our upper and lower bounds are going to change to something very nice, making the polynomial vanish on one lower bound. And also we see that x minus 2a is nothing but x minus a minus a, which is going to result in t minus a after doing the substitution. Also our dx, since a is a constant, hence nothing but dt, making our life so much easier in the process. Meaning overall, our area basically, our integral, is going to result in r times the integral from. If we were to plug a into our x, a minus a is going to be zero, since negative a is the additive inverse of a. If we were to plug 2a into here, if you have two apples and take one apple away, analytic apple theory, you are going to be left with one apple. And then we know x minus a is nothing but t, and then we have t minus a as being the other multiplication part, the other factor, dt. Now we can start factoring everything out. This right here is going to turn into 2t squared minus t times a. And now this is just integrating a polynomial, which is extremely trivial. This is going to turn into r times, okay, t squared is going to turn into t to the third power over three minus, and then we're going to get um, t squared times a divided by two. And all of this from zero to a. And like mentioned before, one of the bonds is going to vanish very nicely because all of those are dependent on t strictly, meaning we are not going to have an absolute lead. Okay, no, no one to say basically, meaning at zero, everything is going to vanish. If we were to plug a into here, this is going to give us a to the third power, a squared times a is also a to the third power, leaving us with an area of something r times a to the third power. Then we have one third minus one half. Okay, one third minus one half, those are just simple manipulations. So we have a common denominator of six, then we are going to get a two minus three, and this is going to go in, uh, turn into negative one six, meaning our area, in areas defined positive, it's just the absolute value of what we are going to have here, namely the scaling factor times r to the third power over six. And that's basically it. I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend channels, like, and want to support channel a bit more, even in 2021, then make sure to support the channel on Patreon or buy those fancy t-shirts I created. Oh, oh, this formula is so, so nice. And yeah, up until the next video, have a flamble day. Ciao.